always thought about what can we do for the state of California or for the country, for the United States. We come here to figure out how to solve some of the world's toughest issues. The mission of the Institute is to advance postpartisanship, where leaders put people over political parties and political ideology. Most of the farming and most of where people live are in the areas that don't get as much precipitation. We also have variability from one year to the next. We have droughts, we have floods. California has one of the most sophisticated engineered water systems in the world. From 1998 to 2010, this is the, the way that breaks down. About half for the environment, about 40% for farms, and about 10% for cities. Everybody of these three pies has been taking a hit during this drought. What you've also probably been hearing is that agriculture uses a lot of water and it's not a very big share of the economy, and that is true. The U.S. is an agricultural powerhouse globally, and yet agriculture is not a huge share of the U.S. economy. That's true in California, too. We're the largest agricultural state in the nation. We're an agricultural powerhouse in part because we have great growing conditions if you can add the water. We have dry summers and dry growing seasons, which means you, you can really control your crop production in a way that it's much harder if you have rainfall coming down on you during your growing season. Human water use, combined use by farms and cities, is about the same as it's been since the early 80s. And what we've been doing is making better use of the water. Uh, droughts reveal strengths and weaknesses in, in our water management system. We've been lucky in a way because our urban areas have already been doing a, a pretty good job planning. Investments in storage have increased storage capacity in Southern California by 13 or 14 percent, which is huge. And that is why the economy is not falling into the ocean right now with, with this drought. It doesn't mean we're done, but it means that there has been some learning and some preparation, and that's really important. There's not a silver bullet. There are a lot of things that we need to be doing all at once. We need to be diversifying supplies. We've started to do that, but there's a lot more to do in terms of recycled water, capturing storm water and rainwater, the kind of things that are being done here now in LA. Managing demand, and that's thinking about how we can change our landscapes to reduce outdoor water use in urban areas while still having really beautiful places to live. Expanding water trading so that you can get water to places where it's gonna really help reduce the economic costs of, of drought enhancing water storage, and there's money in the bond for that. Underground is also really important. And then I'll say modernize, that really we need to look at our institutions to be ready to, to do this better, with better rates, water rates, codes, regulations, and measurement. This is on people's minds and creates, creates some openings and opportunities for policy, policy change. The question is not, what are the needs of the Republicans or the Democrats? The real question is, what are the needs of our people? If you just stick to one party's proposals, you miss half of the good ideas.